For the last couple of weeks, or this two weeks, we have been on the subject of the series, What is Love? How many people have been blessed so far? I, 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 know, I know many tables have been shattered. Some people have been caught by glasses flying everywhere. I apologize. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Amen. But we are continuing today. Amen. And I cannot guarantee that it would not be any less violent. But alas, we'll see where the Lord takes us. Amen. So we are continuing with what is love part, part three. And, and you know, yes, um, last Sunday we were in Genesis 2. And we talked about the man and woman. But I want to focus a bit more today on the marriage, husband and wife. If you are married, this pertains to you. If you are single, you are planning to be married, it's good to take notes. Amen? A lot of times I find that the big, most of the issues we have in marriage is the perception of what we think marriage is. So we have an expectation of what we think marriage should be, and then the reality is so far from what we expect. And when the disconnect comes, that's where the problem comes in. Amen? See, see, marriage is the only institution in life where you get the certificate before you do the work. I'll say that again. Most of the times, you have to do the work to get the certificate, right? You go to school, four years. I mean, if it's uni, four years, five years, six years, whatever degree you're doing, master's, PhD, you have to put in the work before you are qualified for the certificate. But in marriage, it's the opposite. On your wedding day, we dance, hey, hey, hey. And then we give you the certificate, and then we say, earn it, right? So, so, so marriage is, is uh, an institution of learning, lifetime learning, amen? And so we're going to be delving a bit into the marriage and how, what God's idea of what marriage should be, amen? So let's put Ephesians 5 on the screen. Ephesians 5, we're going to start from the 22nd verse. Now, it just so happens that it starts with wives. So, wives, women, this is not personal. We're just following the Bible. Now, if it gives you any solace, I mean, from 22 to 24, I think it's women, and then... <laughs> From 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, is men. So, that should make you feel better. Amen? But we're going to start with the women. Amen? Let's put Ephesians 5, 22 on the screen. Um, let's switch to NIV first. Then we're going to switch back to Amplified. Because it says, wives, be subject to your own husbands. But, but, but. I, I want to switch to NIV, then I'll switch back to Amplified very quickly. Amen? Put it NIV. Wives. I know it's out. Everybody just went quiet. It's almost like that word is like, it's like bile in the mouth of women. It's like that word that they hate. It's like... For feminists, it's like you've poured acid on their body. Want to read? Women, wives, submit yourselves to your, to your own husbands as you do unto the Lord. Switch it back to Amplified. Switch it back to Amplified. It says, wives, be subject to your own husbands as a what? Service to the Lord. Now, 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 before we go any further, I know all the, all the husbands are happy. <laughs> Tell them, wives, submit. But let me first dispel certain myths about submission. Amen? Now, the Bible says, because they've used this first and they've abused it 
to try to enslave women. It does not say women submit to men. No. Let's start there. Because you are a man, you expect submission. No, sir. <laughs> no woman owes you submission. Oh, it's getting quiet. It does not say women submit to men. So if you're a man and you expect that any woman you meet should submit to you, sorry. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says wives submit to your own husband. So the only man you owe submission in life to is your Let's start there. So if you're going around, what's wrong with you? After all, I'm a man. Sorry, sir. She owes you nothing. Owe no man nothing but what? There it is. Let's dispel that myth first. Wives, submit to your own husbands. The second myth we must dispel when it comes to submission is that women are less than men. No, sir. The Bible says in Genesis 1 that he created man and woman, he created he, them. He created them equal. Men and women are created equal in the sight of God. Eh, but, 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 pastor, it says submit. Yes, the very fact that they're being required or asked to submit proves the very fact that they were created equal. Because they were created less than, they will not ask them to submit. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just having a conversation. The very fact that they're saying submit as a service proves that they were created equal. Because if she was less than you, then why are they asking her as a service? That should be a, a default. No, but when they are requiring that wife submit, it indicates that man and woman are equal. So, husband, you must understand that submission is not an entitlement. It's a service that your wife gives you. It's quiet now. Oh. Hey, <laughs> As unto the Lord. You see, submission without equality is slavery. <laughs> oh, it's quiet. I've just started. And if it's slavery, it's not submission. See, see there, there's a difference between obedience and submission. Obedience is a deed. Submission is an attitude. Obedience happens whether you want to or not, willingly or if you are a slave, whether you like it or not, you must do because you have no say in what you do. But submission is an attitude. And so when you willingly yield your authority, that is submission. Are you still with me? Right, so let's continue. So let's just quickly dispel the myths. Wives, Submit to your own. In other words, the man that you chose. Eh. Eh. No one chose the man for you. You chose him. If you chose him to be your husband, what you are saying is, I trust you with the direction of my life. I am putting my life in your hand. And I trust you. And if that be the case, then you owe him submission. Are you still with me? If you chose him, then submission should not be a problem. Submit to your husbands as a service unto who? So when you submit to your husband, it is like you are doing it unto the Lord. So in other words, the way you serve the Lord is the way you should serve your husband. Uh-oh. 
Your husband becomes the representation of the Lord in your home. So the way you talk to the Lord is the way you should talk to your husband. Can I get a witness? The way you handle the Lord is the way you should handle. Oh, it's getting quiet now. <laughs> it's getting quiet. Hey, we're, just, we're just doing scripture. Are you, are you... If you want to tell your husband about himself, ask yourself, will you talk to the Lord that way? <laughs> hey. <clears throat> Submit to your husband as a service to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. Himself being the savior of the body, but as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives should be subject to their husbands in what? Oh, come on, talk to me. In what? Did they say in, in, in some things? <laughs> in everything. Respecting both their position as protector and their responsibility to God as what? So, in your household, your husband is king. You see, it's interesting that women, particularly wives, have no issue submitting to their male bosses at work and because he's my boss. And, and, and his corporate culture, the institution, demands that I do so. Ah, uh, ma! The institution of heaven demands that you submit to your husband at home. Your husband is king. You are queen. He is king. Eh, but what if my husband is a wayward husband? Is a used to, eh, what if he has a girlfriend outside? Okay, ma, you are queen. You don't bring yourself down to be fighting with subjects. It, it baffles me when I see Wives fighting girlfriend outside. You have lowered your position. You are queen of your household. So if your husband is having girlfriend outside, you know what you do? You don't fight him. You go on your knees. You fight on your knees and you call the king of kings to handle your king. Listen, listen. I'm not saying condone foolishness, but you see, you see, <laughs> I will fight him. I will give him hell. I will destroy. Mm. If a man is going to be stupid, he's going to be stupid. And the way you handle him is not by fighting him. Let me tell you. Let me, can I give you expo? <laughs> they say that when you do good to wicked people, it's like putting hot coal on their head. They said, the wicked runneth when no one pursueth. Let me paint a scenario for you. You know your husband has a girlfriend outside. You know. You have the evidence. It's in your hand. You know. He comes home. Welcome, darling. Come in. <laughs> darling, how was your day? Sit down. Let me make you di dinner. No. Tell him, what's, what's wrong? Relax, sit down. Tell him, how was your day? Ha! Ah! The man's body will be saying, what's the problem? His conscience. You don't have to fight him. Do good to him. His guilty conscience. After a while, I say, ah, no, no. When, in fact, he won't even, he won't even sleep well. Is that going to be like this? Because he's waiting for the other shoe to drop. You know what true power is? When you have the ability to do something and you hold back. That is how you are the queen. 
of your home. The Bible says, giving honor to him in every, somebody say everything, including your body. Hey, hey, go quiet. Wait, wait, wait. Before I go into this, I want to read something to you. Put on, on the screen, 1 Corinthians 7, 1 to 5. Put it in the NIV, please. 1 Corinthians 7, 1 to 5. Put the NIV. It says this. Now for the matters you wrote about, this is Paul speaking, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. But since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with who? Mm -hmm. And each woman with her own the husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife. Can I get a witness in the house, somebody? Uh-huh. And likewise, the wife to her. <laughs> Some husbands are being delivered in the house. Wives to her wards. Look at this. The wife does not have. Hey, we are reading Bible. The wife does not have authority over what? Your body is not your own. If you wanted your body to be your own, stay single. But once you marry, wife, your body. Is not put it back on the screen, but she yields it to who? Uh -huh. Husbands, can I get a witness in the house? Uh -huh. He said, in everything, including your body, your body is not your own. Public service announcement. Ma, <laughs> it's not your own. It's your husband. See, it is your reasonable service. It is your responsibility to ensure that your husband's cup is full. Okay. Okay. Can we, see, it's good that it's not family Sunday. We can talk. Can we talk? It is your responsibility. See, if your husband's cup is full, no girlfriend can pour anything inside. Your body is not your own. I don't feel like it. Who asked you if you feel like? Ah, wait now. Well, hold on, hold on. We're going to have a real conversation. Can we be real? Don't misunderstand, we're going to come to the men. Yes, you, woman is not a robot. You must do your things. Yeah, yeah, let's leave the men. Let's focus on the women first. When you wake up in the morning, I don't feel like going to work. Do you go? Ah. <laughs> you wake up and you don't feel like, and you say, you know what? I don't feel like today. And you are an, em <laughs> you are, you are an employee of Lip Dad. You're not an employer. You're the employee. You're working as five. You say, I don't feel like, I don't feel like, I just, and so, do you go to work? You don't go. And, and th that's why you don't have a job. <laughs> it, it's, it's very clear. Because last I checked, whether you feel like or you don't feel like, you have an obligation. You have a responsibility. And responsibility is showing up even when you don't feel. Oh, it's getting quiet now. It's, it's getting quiet in the house. Even when you, see, wives, husbands are very simple. Wait. Men are not complicated. I will prove to you, if you give a man three things, you are okay. Give him respect. Give him sex. Give him food, sorted. Yeah. 
I mean, man, am I, am I, am, am I missing anything? If you give a man these three things, that's, that, we don't ask for much. Respect me, feed me, sex me, I'm good. That's it. For everything he needs to do, that's it. Your body is not your own. It's for your husband. Songs of Solomon, satisfy him with the bosom. Why are you dressing like you are 75 when you are 40? Time to sleep, you tie up. Come on. Uh-uh. We're transparent something. Be smelling good. Let me tell you, my mother, my mother always sprayed perfume before she went to bed. I used to tease her. I was strong. Say, please, I'm smelling good for my husband. Be, see, can, I, can we keep it real? These girls outside are not smiling. See, 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 see. If they won't tell you, I will tell you. You know me, I keep it real. Listen, listen. Women, women, first of all, the ratio to women to men outside. For every five women, one man. It's, 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 it's hard out there in the streets, first of all. Secondly, a man's attractiveness increases the older he becomes. You know why? Financial stability. Come closer, come closer. A man can pull a woman in his 50s that he could not get in his 20s. You know why? He has more financial capacity. Who face help? The girls outside are not looking at his face. They are looking at his money. Say, they say when money enters, everybody becomes fine. <laughs> the older he gets, the more attractive he becomes outside. So there are these young girls that are chasing men that he represents financial stability and security. You can't be sending your husband out empty. Even if he's a useless man. If you have eaten at home and you are full, if they bring food in front of you, even if you, there's no space. Feet, press down, shaking together, running over. There is no space. Even if he wants to, he cannot. Make sure his cup is full. Overflowing. Amen? The truth of the matter is, these girls outside in the streets are not smiling. They now have one girl. You, you're always doing rapper. Mm-hmm. And they have a girl outside. She enters, everybody's smelling good. Like, hello, 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 sir. Hello, sir. In your house, your husband, eh? Have you not? Go and eat. What's the problem? Don't disturb me. My day was... Someone said, sir, are you okay? Have you eaten? Do you need anything? Sir, sir. (laughs) A woman's attractiveness increases in marriage because the older she gets the man who she's with realizes you were with me when i had nothing so now that i have everything i will give you the world do you understand what i'm saying my mother who was heralded outside everyone pastor pimba pastor pimba but everywhere she went her husband was her crown she would come back from administrations come down are you okay? Da, have you eaten? Have you eaten? I'm coming. I shall go to the kitchen. Dish his food. 
down, down. No, no, nobody, there was a, nobody can serve her husband but her. It was a standing rule. She honored her husband. She made him her king. When a man is celebrated in his own home, there is nothing he's looking for outside. Amen. Amen. We're well, just is Bible. I'm not. I'm not adding. We're well, just wives submit to your husband, including your body, giving him. The Bible says, giving him that position as protector and responsibility to God as the head of the house. Fantastic, because of time. Let's go to husbands. Do we say, hey, talk to them. It's their turn. Shall we go to verse, <laughs> let's go to verse 25. What does it say? As a matter of fact, before I go to husbands, wait first, wait first, wait first. There's one thing I need to say. Wives, the most important person in your house is not your children, it's your husband. I hear women say this all the time, eh, it's okay, as long as I have my children, I'm okay. No, 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 Your children will come and go. They are only here for a while. As long as you have the children, they will marry and they will leave you. They will go do life. And who you will be with is your husband. Are you with me? You see, a lot of times women fall into this trap where they train their husbands and love their children. Rather, it should be love your husbands and train your children. You see, your children mess up. Oh, it's okay, darling. It's okay. Don't worry. It's okay. Don't do that. It's okay. It's okay. Your husband, what's wrong with you? Should you not be doing, no, no, no. do you know what, that's not the way you're supposed to do it. How, first of all, as a woman, how can you tell a man how to be a man where you're not a man yourself? Do you know, did it, all the men outside, did it, did it, did it, no, 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 no. Wives, love your husband and train your children. The little that he does, celebrate it. We talked about this last week. The little he does, amplify it. Let him see that you appreciate him. Just say, sir, you are doing well. The economy is, is bad outside, but I respect you. I, you know that little tap on his back goes a long way. Darling, I see you. Thank you. Well done. It's not easy, but you are doing your best. You know what that does to a man? It makes him want to do more. Okay, I'm done with wives. Let's go to husbands. 25, it says this. Husbands, love your wives. Love your wives. Seek the highest good for her and surround her with a caring unselfish love, just as Christ also loved the church and did what? Gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify the church, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word of God, so that in turn he might present the church to himself in glorious splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be wholly set apart for God and blameless. Even so, husbands should and are morally up, somebody say obligated, to love their own wives as being in a sense their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves, for no one ever hated his own, but instead he nourishes and protects and cherishes it just as Christ does the church because we are members part of his 
Now, the first thing he says is husbands should what? Love. Husbands, love your wives. Husbands, love your wives. Husbands, love your wives. Remember when we talked about it in the first, um, the first week, we talked about love coming from God and love coming from God started with Adam and then Eve. It starts from God to the man to the woman. The responsibility to love starts with the man. A woman is an incubator. Whatever you give her, she will give you back. Remember we had that conversation. If you give her love, she will love you till eternity. So if you are getting something contrary to what you want, then check what you are giving. There's something in computing called giggle, garbage in, garbage out. If you are getting garbage back, then sir, you are putting in, oh, you don't want to have that conversation. Husbands, love your wives. So you can't, you can't force her into submission. You love her into submission. If you love a woman, she will move heaven and earth for you. She will bend over backwards. She will reach into depths that she did not know she had to do everything that is required. See, women don't get enough credits because we expect them to be wives and mothers and individuals all at the same time and nothing is supposed to, to suffer. You expect her to be a fully present mother, but a fully present wife. How she do it? Take care of the kids, oh, but take care of me. Yet, find time to be yourself and have a life. That's a lot of moving parts. The Bible says, husbands, love your wife. And it goes further, as Christ loved the church and gave himself a hair. The first prerequisite for being a husband is that you must be willing to die. See, the clap is fading. The clap is like... Not figuratively. No, 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 no. Did Christ die figuratively? Oh, it just got tough, huh? If you're not willing to die physically and put yourself on the line for that woman, you are not, you are not qualified to be a husband. You are a whore. <laughs> you are a whore. You don't get the husband. Women, if any man says, I want to marry you, ask him a question. Can you die? We're not playing games. If he's not willing to die for you, he's not ready to be your horse. He's a whore. It says, like Christ loved the church. What did Christ do for the church? He gave himself. Literally. So, sir, if you're not willing to put your life on the line for that woman and for all the children that will come from that woman, and you're not willing to, your life is sacrificial. From the moment you say, I do, your life is sacrificial. You are now in a constant perpetual state of giving, giving of your money, giving of your time, giving of your resources, giving of your life. For God so loved the world that he wants. If you're not ready to give, then don't marry. Stay by yourself. Why do you need helper? Oh, it's getting quiet now. Let me tell you a story. There was a woman that was taking her supposed husband, not knowing he was a whore, but <laughs> was taking her soon-to-be husband to go meet her parents, right? And um, I think they were in Ibadan. True story. So they got to the bus stop, 
And as soon as they got to the bus stop, I think, arm robbers came out of nowhere, right? Bruh. Man's got on an Okada and literally left the scene. Left. He did even, hey, kill. This picked you up for the rest of the day. You now call that the next morning. Hello, dear. Are you, are you okay? Sorry, I haven't been able to get to myself all, all, all through the night. I'm just getting myself. I, 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 are you okay? Ha. The next morning. That's not a husband. That's a what? Thank you. Husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church. Christ is the standard. Did he say love your wife when she's lovable? Uh, the Bible says while we were yet in sin, he died. It is the love of God that drew us to repentance. You see, the standard is high. You must love her. It says like Christ, by the washing of the word, your responsibility, what does Jesus do? He sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession daily. You must be her covering spiritually. It's not her job to pray, it's your job to pray. You have to cover her. You have to be her protection. You have to speak words of encouragement. You are her head. You are her covering. It is your rest. Is it easy to be a husband? Now the men are not clapping. The men are not clapping. They were, they were making noise before. Now the vim has left. We are just reading scripture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, you must be willing to die. Men, you must die to your pride. You must die to yourself. He says, love your wife as your own body. You see, you see your wife is a reflection of you. The Bible says, he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor. So she is your favor factor. How do you take care of your favor? The one God has put in your house. You cannot tear her down. You cannot belittle her. You cannot abuse her. You cannot beat her. Remember we talked about if you're beating your wife, you are what? You know, everyone, you are mad. As your own body, what you will not do to yourself, how would you do to. You know, sometimes I've heard of situations where a man is driving the car and the woman is jumping bus. How, sir? How? If there's one car, she's the one driving it. Yes! How can you be okay? You are driving car, it's your wife is jumping bus, your favor factor. Receive sense in Jesus' name. What I will not tolerate, you dare not try it to my wife. She's the first representation of me. Your money is not your money. Uh -huh. you're, 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 you see, see, you are in a perpetual state of giving. Your money, yes, yes, I know. It's not easy. But now man, you be. Now man, collect time, collect time. You try. It's not easy. You try. I know the shoe is pinching you. If it's not you, who should he pinch? That's why you're a man. The Bible says if you enter a house, you must bind the strong man. You are the strong man of your household. 
Nobody can enter unless they come through you. Do not abdicate your position physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and financially. In every way, you are the strong man. That's why you have brother's shoulders. You carry it. You have chest, chest down. Now man, you be. I'm looking at my time. Let me, let me not get carried away. Let me, let me, let me. <laughs> Look at verse 31. What does it say? For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined and be faithfully devoted to who? And the two shall become now you say you won't go marry you. Now you go chase this woman, carry her from Papa's house. You are now responsible for that woman. She now becomes the most important person in your life. I said it last Sunday, I'll say it again. Even more important than your mother. This is my house. My mother can come anytime she wants. No, sir. If that's the case, go marry your mother. Who are you joined to? You will leave, it says, your father and your mother. And you are now joined to your wife. And the two become one. I said it last Sunday. The highest honor a woman can do is leave her father's name and take yours. She has your name. The moment, and I said this, I'm a father, I have a daughter. Ah, God punished the devil. <laughs> hmm. Some boy from someone will come and, in fact, I already planned it. Tell you, I've been planning this thing for years. Come, sit down, young man, sit down. First, you see that ocean under Third Milan Bridge? If you can't walk on it, get out. Get, get out of here. After all, he says, go and walk. So, yeah, go and walk. If you can walk, then come back. Secondly, here is water. Turn it to wine. Let's not talk too much. The kingdom of God is not about talk, but of what? Power. Show yourself. Thirdly, that's why I'm going back to the gym. Don't worry, I'm going back to the gym. Thirdly, you must beat me. We'll fight. We'll go to the gym. Oh yeah, carry weights. What can you carry? I've been carrying my daughter my whole life. You want to transfer that responsibility to you. Ogbeni, lift. I've been putting all the weights. When I was your age, I was pushing water truck. Come on, carry the car. What nonsense. Anyways, I digress. Where was I, please? The two shall become one. This is the mystery that we're speaking of. Because of time, I'm going to jump. First Peter 3, 7. I'm, it's 11.03. I need to come to a close. First Peter 3. I want to show you something. 3 7. In the same way, you husbands live with your wives in an understanding way, with great gentleness and what? Tact. And with an intelligent regard. For the marriage relationships, you must handle her with great gentleness and tact. Don't take out life's frustrations on her. She's not your punching bag. If you're frustrated, go to the gym. Don't take it out on her with gentleness and tact, as with someone physically weaker. Since she is a woman, 
This is not talking about weakness in intelligence or her mind or her capacity. It's talking about her physical structure. Any man that is fighting you are an agbaya. Yes. Yes. If you want to fight, go and fight somebody your own size. Let's test the length of your strength. Go and fight man. There are lots of things men try with women that they will not try with another man. Very quiet. Very silent. Don't worry, don't worry. It's, it's, it's just entering. It's a lot to take in. They're just, it's okay. You know, men were happy when I started with the wives. I said I was coming to them. Show her honor and respect as a fellow heir of grace of life. <laughs> See this part. Read this, read, read this part. So that your prayers will not be hindered or ineffective. When I said she was the favor factor, I was not just talking. If you are not succeeding in life, how are you treating your wife? Oh, no. The quick God prosper me. God enlarge me. He's hitting the ceiling. He's bouncing back. Because like, first of all, the one I've given you, how are you handling her? To whom much is given? Much. See, if you're faithful over the little, I'll commit more into your hand. I have put a woman in your house who is the, the key to your favor and you are abusing her. How you treat a gift is an indication of how you see the giver of the gift. You are telling God that you are not someone that is a good steward. He cannot trust you because if you cannot be a good husband to your wife, how will he make you a good husband or a good man over anything that is important to him? It's quiet now. Put it back on the screen. So your prayers will not be hindered. If you do not handle your wife properly, your prayers are being hindered. You want to progress in life. Honor your wife. If you want your prayers to be effective, the fervent prayers of a effective prayers of a righteous man avail it much. Let's add another part. Only if he's taking care of his wife. I think on that note, Selah. <laughs> you better begin to look at your wife differently. Put God to test. Take care. Just be the best husband you can be for one month and see how your life begins to change. Because when you are taking care of her, as you are praying, she's praying for you. She's praying with you. She's standing beside you. All the windows of heaven begin to open to you because you are now showing. The two of you are one flesh before God. So what you do to her, God is saying you are doing to yourself. Wives, submit to your husbands. As Christ is the head of the church, husbands, love your wives. Bible says that the man is the head of the woman and Christ is the head of the man of the church. Right? And it's a beautiful thing because as women submit to men, husband, not to women, let me change that. As wives submit to their husbands, husbands submit to God. Everybody is in submission. And if you are, as Christ loves, servant leadership, Jesus, the ultimate example, says to be the greatest leader, you must be the servant of all. That's why Ephesians 5.21 says, submit one, put it back on the screen, Ephesians 5.21, it says, be subject to one another. Or if NIV, put the NIV translation so they see that. NIV 
5.21. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For Christ. I'm going to make an altar call right now. Remember we talked about love. God is love. And love is God. You cannot give what you don't have. If you have never experienced love, you can never give love. In this equation, God is in the mix. It starts with the source of love. And so the only way you will ever be that husband or that wife that God requires of you is if you have a relationship with the God of love. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The invitation is simple. Come and meet the God of love. A love that is patient, a love that is kind, a love that holds no records of wrong, a love that believes all, perfect love, one that doesn't judge you, that doesn't require that you be perfect, it says I love you in spite of you, a love that gives you grace constantly every day. This is a love that I'm asking you to come meet today. A love that is not conditional. A love that is not based on what you do. A love that is consistent. A love that is safe. A love that is real. So if you're here today and you say, I want to meet this God of love. I want to know this love. I want this love in my life. Wherever you may be, grab your bags, grab your Bibles, whatever you have. Come out to the front. We're waiting on you. Don't be shy. It's about you and God. It's about making that decision today. So if you're here, we're waiting on you. Nothing I desire compares to you. And say these words with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you that you sent your son to die for me on the cross of Calvary. And he shed his blood for my sins. I thank you that his blood has washed away all my sins. All things have passed away and all things have become new. From this moment on, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you are Lord over my life. From this moment on, Till eternity. I renounce the devil and all his ways. And from this moment on, I live for you. I thank you that you are writing my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Father, according to the profession of their faith, we seal it under the blood of Jesus. And we thank you that this marks the beginning of the best years of their lives. We ask, oh God, that this moment will be a bookmark in the history of their lives. I say this was the moment that they began to walk with Jesus. I ask, oh God, that you give them and show them a love that cannot be explained. And from this moment on, they shall be known as the ones that walk with you. Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, all adoration and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.